Drills Talk, Drills Talk, episode 37. In this episode, we're going to discuss the top four methods to releasing emotions. This is based off of a blog I wrote entitled Emotional Hoarding. We know what hoarding is. You've seen the TV shows. So doing that emotionally, it's a mess. Exactly. A lot of us have an issue with releasing emotions. We hold on to everything. We, we pull back to you know, the worst things that's ever happened to us, and we use it as a reason as to why we are the way we are today. A lot of guys, you know, including myself, usually holds in a lot of emotion. And I've come to learn that that's not good. It's not helping at all. I'm not tougher because of it. I'm actually hurting myself. We're losing years, fellas. And, and ladies holding on to it, you're losing years also. Stress is not good. So what we're going to do with that, we're going to take that stress. We're going to take all that old stuff we're holding on to. We're going to let it go. It's gone. It will bother us never more. By the great of the new world. Yo, Drill. Drills Talk, Drills Talk, episode 37. In this episode, we're going to discuss the top four methods to releasing emotions. But before we get started, please like, subscribe, share, show your love however you need to show your love. Do not keep me a secret. Every Monday, new blog. Every Wednesday, new vlog. Drills Talk. Every Friday, a new beat instrumental produced by me. Thanks for joining everyone who's already been with me. Thanks for sticking with me. Let's get started. Number one. Number one is realize holding them in isn't a strength. This took me a long time. Like I've grown up and was taught actually, and a lot of guys are taught, a lot of women also, to just not show your feelings, not let people know you're hurt, not let people know you're struggling, not let people know anything, you know, don't show any weaknesses. And you know, growing up in the inner city, that probably was the best way to do it. Um, but now that, you know, a lot of us have grown, a lot of people who watch this show has grown, we don't need to do that anymore. And, you know, we don't need that defense mechanism up because we can't really express ourselves verbally. We can express ourselves verbally now. So we're old enough to explain the emotions without, you know, quote unquote, as a guy feeling soft or as a female feeling that, you know, you're playing this damn zone distress all the time. No, keeping it in is hurting us. Keeping it in is taking shaving the years off of our lives. And we're thinking that we're being, you know, this better person or this stronger person because of it, but it's actually inside slowly tearing us down, death by a thousand cuts. You know, these small things that we're just holding in, holding in, holding in, never getting over. Um, we have these triggers that just bring back everything that we're holding in. And, you know, we let that all out on somebody who's unsuspecting and probably don't deserve everything they're getting because we've held this in so much. And, you know, eventually it pours out a little bit by itself. And it's usually to the wrong person. And we can help that by letting it out, either giving it to the person who deserves it in that instant that is hurting us or, you know, talking about it and letting it out slowly rather than having it spill out on somebody that you know doesn't deserve it at all. Back to what hurting us, taking years off our life, stress, you know, high blood pressure, all that stuff. You know, it comes from holding in all that you know stuff, of course, eating bad and, you know, things like that has his, you know, additions also uh, adds to it. But holding that stuff in stresses a killer, a silent killer. And we think that holding it in is somehow helping and it's not. I just want to get that out to everybody. Let it go. Find somebody to talk to. If you can't find one to talk to, you can do number two. Let's get started. Number two. Number two is find ways to release them. So we just touched on people having issues with maybe finding somebody to release it too. So we have to find other ways. How can you release that stress? How can you get this, you know, this anger, this invisible, you know, aura over you, off of you? You know, one good way is to exercise. You're putting yourself through another form of stress, but it's a good stress. You're, you're working out, you're pushing your muscles, you're pushing your body, you're stimulating your mind, you're working your heart all at the same time. But it's a good stress because you stop and then it's over. You know, a lot of us wish that the stress that we have, we can just stop, you know, press a stop button and it's over. This one, in this case, working out, you can. And you get the benefit of, you know, a little muscle. You can go up the stairs without breathing hard. You know, you have a little discipline, which can transfer over to other things in life. So, yeah, I can work out three times a week or I can work out five times a week. And because you can do that, other things outside of that are easier. Yeah, I know I have no problem, you know cleaning up the house you know, every Friday because, you know, it's just part of my routine now. I work out, I work out, I work out. The last workout, I clean up the house. And then 
the house is clean. I go take a shower and then I get out and relax. Everything's clean. Everything's done. I like that feeling. You can take a walk. You know, walks work for some people. If walking is a little boring to you, you can get a bike and ride a bike. Uh, it works for some people. Um, meditation is something that you can actually try just sitting by yourself. A lot of people like to go through things alone. Meditation allows you to do that. Um, but it's more helpful because you're, you know, in a deeper thought, a, a better space to find those issues and let those issues go. Um, so I, I suggest that also. Uh, reading a good book or watching a good movie. Um, all these things can be ways of releasing that stress. And of course, dealing with the thing that is stressing you out, uh, addressing that thing. In addition to everything that I've mentioned already, um, never actually addressing the point or the reason why you would have to do all these things are going to cause these things to just turn to, you know, temporary fixes. They're going to be band-aids because you're not actually addressing the issue. So remember, yes, find your way, your way of, you know, getting rid of this stress and releasing this stress and no longer holding on to it. But also what's causing this stress? I need to address that also. Number three. Number three is to encourage others to do so. So yeah, you may have issues with talking with someone, but everyone in your circle may not. Someone in your circle may be dying to let this out. And you going around and talking to your circle, talking to your friends, your cousins, your you know siblings, your, your parents, aunts and uncles, you may find somebody that's like, you know what? I was looking for somebody to let this out. You're here, you know, let me tell you what's going on with me. Now you've helped that person out. You helping that person out, you may be able to say, okay, well, yeah, this person trusted me and confided in me. I can confide in them and I can trust them. And let me tell them what's going on with me. And maybe I can get this off my chest and I'll feel better also. That helps. Helping other people, you know, seeing that other people are okay with opening up can trick you into saying, okay, well, yeah, maybe it's okay for me to open up finally. Maybe it's okay for me to try this and, you know, let my guard down a little bit. And you'll love yourself for it. Uh, try it out. I don't know who it's going to be. I don't know if you have to go around and, you know, maybe find somebody who you think is stressed or just make it natural and say, OK, well, I'm going to talk a little longer to everyone I speak to in my circle. I'm going to ask a few more questions, you know, and seeing if anything is going to you know, spill out a little bit to where I can ask a few questions past that. And maybe we have a good conversation going on. And because they're opening up. I can open up right after them. We can have a good conversation and maybe both of us can get past the issues or the stressors that we're having by releasing our emotions to each other. Or maybe we can both, you know, go for a walk and talk about it there. So there's no double dipping or both get into meditation and say, hey, you know, how, how are you doing after you meditate? How do you feel? And oh, well, this is how I feel. OK, well, this is how I feel. I think this thing is working. Let's continue doing this. Let's, you know. Be each other's rocks. Let's stick with each other. And, and, and we know that meditation works, but if meditation is not working, we can always talk to each other and we can always go for a walk or a bike ride or a hike or whatever you need to do to get through what you're getting through as long as you're releasing it and addressing it. Number four. Number four is unlocking the feeling of feeling as alive as ever. When you let go of these emotions, you just feel this rush of relief you feel, you know, like, you know how you in a movie theater and you're in a scary movie or some action movie and it's just sudden foul or the sudden explosion or sudden bang and you jump a little bit and, you're, you know, your skin is crawling a little bit. That's how you would feel. You just finally feel here. I know when you're going through some things, I've been through a lot of stress also. Um, you just feel this kind of deadness around you. You know, it's just like, OK, another issue, another day, another thing I got to deal with, another blah, blah, blah. And you kind of lose the fact that you're alive. You, you lose the fact that, you know, you're a person and you're living, you're a human being, your heart is beating, you have purpose, you have things to do. You just lose it. And I remember I was going through it a while ago and I was walking, you know, this was years ago, actually. I was walking and one of my neighbors at the time had a dog and I didn't hear the dog at all. And I'm just, you know, going through the motions. I had just grabbed my mail and... The dog just barked out of nowhere, just, Arr! and I was jumped. And like, I'd really jump at anything. And this time I jumped, I knew he had a dog. I didn't see the dog. I didn't think about a dog. And I was just like, whoa, but it woke me up and made me feel alive. 
And I'm like, this is how I should always feel. Like I should feel alert. I should feel here. Why am I not feeling that way? And once that happened, I realized that, hey, I'm letting my stressors, I'm letting my emotions that I'm holding on to, like take me out of this world and it's taken away from me. Like I get one life that I know of and I'm not living it to its fullest. I'm not feeling everything I should feel. I'm not experiencing everything I should experience because I'm holding on to this stuff that happened already. This stuff is over. So how am I going to deal with it? That's how I got here. And I'm like, you, I got to share this. I have to be able to tell people that holding on to it doesn't make you a G, doesn't make you a rock, doesn't make you the strong person. Um, there's no super soldier. It is no reason to be that in this world. We're here to feel. We're here to hurt. We're here to smile. We're here to laugh. It's, it's, it's all part of the experience. But in absolutely no way are we supposed to hold on to this. Drills Talk, episode 37. This is the top four methods to releasing emotions. Please share this if you know of anybody that needs to see it. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. It's Drills.com. Check this out. It's Drills.